kind of fun from our end. We, uh, we've been working on, obviously, the garden. And man, it's growing. I mean, it's just so warm here right now that the sun's come out and we've got blooms in our hyacinths and our daffodil is already taken off. I know you can see that. See? One of our little, I don't know what they call this thing. What do they call this? A daffodil tete a tete. And uh, the joy that I like about that is that we always go to like 99 cent stores or we go, you know, just wherever we can find something on sale or cheap. And then we use only those things that we have. You know, we just take whatever pots we got, you know, and if something's on sale, we might, you know, go get one. But otherwise, we really don't buy anything new. Because <laughs> really, with gas prices, we can afford it. But, well, it's always provided, you know. And I like that, you know, because I always sit down and with my wife, you know, we'll, we'll say before we go, you know, if the Lord doesn't want us to buy something, we need to save money because, you know, we're very mindful of every single cent because maybe like you, you know, we don't have a lot of money to spend. You know, we, we live on a pretty limited income. And so if I wanted to have more money, then obviously I could give up the ministry and just go ahead and do back to work, you know, and risk my health, you know, or whatever it may be, and just not do what God wants me to, per se, but just, you know, provide for all those finances that I need to spend on, obviously, you know, new cars, going out, going to the movies, doing this, doing that, buying this, buying that. <laughs> you know what it is, the rat race, you know, the things that you think you need until you discover you can get by on less, because less really is more if you let God provide. And so my wife has discovered that, that, you know, we have more now than we ever did when both of us were working with two incomes. And one of the benefits is that, you know, we get a chance to bless people and share with them, you know, the joy of living our lives according to what God has been telling us to do each and every day. And she sees that, you know, in these plants. She sees it in the home that we live in. We call this apartment that we live in a home, but this big patio area you see now is becoming a garden that you can't see off on the sides, you know. We're growing veggies, you know, and all kinds of neat stuff. But, you know, one of the things I wanted to share this morning was that for many of you with Vidivo that you've been along the way, you know, you saw that little table that I used to sit at and all the huge plants that we had last year that were blooming and... You know, we were under the patio because where we were at, in our other place that we were living, it would get to be a good 110, 120 on that porch because the sun was beating on it. So we had a patio covering, and this year I don't think they're going to let them even do that, which I'm glad we moved. <laughs> but now we have this beautiful patio and this wonderful space and all kinds of room. And praise the Lord, God's been good to us. And so we're going to bring the the little patio table back out because we've been using it in the kitchen. You know, it's kind of like a little bistro table, you know, it's got little stone kind of inset. And both my wife and I were really excited when we got it. It was like, cool, you know, because we always get kind of, I don't know, some people say junky, some people say fabricated, some people say improvised, but I like it. <laughs> but this little bistro table, that was our little a little celebration for each other and we just enjoy sitting down at it so we're gonna kind of like bring it out here in the sunlight part you know and really get a chance to just leave it here you know and just sit here and relax and enjoy you know and that's what we'll do with some of the devotionals is that with Vidivo, Vidivo, with Vidivo today the um, normal read that doesn't have like a, a presentation at the beginning with music and stuff you know and a Kind of a closing thing at the end but just the simple recordings the videos i think we're gonna do it like in the garden you know we might even call it who knows video gardens <laughs> i don't know the lord knows but in devotionals we, you know we'll share from the table again you know and i look forward to that it'll be fun you know but i just wanted to show you again because i promised you that we would as we showed you with just plain dirt here, you know, keep showing you when we grow our veggies or when we grow our plants. Like right now, it's flowering plants that 
remember, this is February. This is like cold season. And I look out and I see trees moving. <laughs> so I don't know where you live living. But right now, God is blessing. So I kind of enjoy this devotional today because it kind of explains why and what I do in video, you know, and sharing with you what God can do with you where you're at in speaking directly to you as opposed to indirectly. Because part of the purpose of all these videos were always to remind you that if you're only like putting the dots together to connect God's will and you're kind of like vague about it, you kind of don't know, or you're kind of like, you know, throwing up some we used to call them Hail Mary passes, you know, where you take this football and you throw a long bomb and you hope somebody catches it. If you're throwing out prayers kind of like that, where you're throwing these long bombs, you know, and you're just kind of hoping that somehow it all works out, that's not my God. <laughs> it may be your God, and it's not the way Jesus works with me. So that's why we started these videos, because we wanted to demonstrate to you and to show you that you know, God's a little more real than that. You know, it's not a question of just kind of like, you know, having a good arm, you know, you really have a lot of faith that your receiver is going to be able to out-muscle somebody else, you know, and catch that ball. But rather, it's more of a personal relationship, you know, it's kind of a development thing, a growing up in the pot that you're planted, because you might be a daffodil blooming in life right now, and you're just like, full of it. <laughs> kind of like that little daffodil is. That poor little guy, he can't help it, he's just happy as can be. Give him a little sun, a little water, man, he's just blooming all over. But some of these other ones, you know, like this hyacinth, you know, he's he's growing. He's a little tiny thing, you know, looks like. But there's this big old bloom down in the middle of it, you know, and he's coming up. It just takes some time. You may be like that. It takes you time to develop, you know. It takes you time to grow up into the fullness of what God wants you to be. You may not hear immediately God speak, but you should make that your goal to bloom where you're planted, or in this case, to hear God speak. Because he promised, Jesus did, not the Father, but Jesus promised that my sheep hear my voice. So bluntly, you should be able at some point in time to hear his voice. If you're settling for anything less, all I can say is you're missing out because everyone else, you know, they're, they're going after it. They want it. They're, they're, they're pursuing it. You know, they're like, they got the ball and they're running with it. They ain't throwing no passes. They're running with that ball for a touchdown. So, you know, if you want to kind of score, you know, with God, you kind of want to take that ball and go for it, you know. You want to kind of see how far you can get down the football field before you start giving it up, you know, and giving away, you know, to the other side some of the benefits that God wants you to have. One of the main things he wants you to know is that not only can you know him personally because of what Jesus has done, but you can hear Jesus speak because of what the Spirit is doing. He will open your eyes that you can see and open your ears, ears that you can hear. And it's not just the Spirit that will speak to you because Jesus will, at some point in time, need you to fulfill that promise in Scripture. You don't have to name it, claim it. You don't have to prove it, do it. You just have to know that that's your goal. Set it as a touchdown. You know, you want to score on that level. So go for it, you know. Don't just be a, a sports fanatic and always think of it in one term, but rather be a God fanatic or a Jesus fanatic and go after the things He's promised you could do or you could have in your relationship with Him. That one thing is to hear His voice. That should be the most primary thing of all. At least it was for me. <laughs> Go ahead, ask me. Did I? Have I? <laughs> Does he every day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no way, man. He puts me through the ringer sometimes. <laughs> but we have a relationship. You know? I pray for you the same would be true. Share everything. Silently, the work of the Spirit is done. Already, love is drawing others to you. Take all who come as sent by me and give them a royal welcome. It will surprise you all that I have planned for you. Welcome all who come with the love of both of your hearts. You may not see the work. Today they may not need you, and tomorrow they may need you. I may send you strange visitors, make each desire to return and not be rejected. Nobody must come and feel unwanted if you would be used by me. Share your love, share your joy, 
Share your happiness and your time. Share your food. And be glad with all that you have to share. For all has come from me to you to share with others through you. Such wonders will unfold. You see it all, but only in the bud, so to speak, now. It hasn't fully bloomed. The glory of the open flower is beyond all your telling or how it is accomplished. Just love, just enjoy, just have joy, just be in peace. In richest abundance only believe. Give out love and all you can with a glad, free heart and hand. Use all you can for others and back will come such countless stores and blessings that you won't be able to contain them. And as you do, even in the least of the little things that you do, which my wife and I have, <laughs> believe me, it will come back to you in a way you'll never imagine. Like our discounts on this board you can't see off to my right that we use for Last Generation Network News. That uh, we got a 40% discount on it. <laughs> or you, when you go to a used store, if you buy something like that, you know, you may find a an office chair, you know, that you go, man, I wonder how much that is, because you don't know, and they have a tag on it, and they don't have a tag on it, and you take it up, and the guy says, ah, I'll give you both of them for five bucks. <laughs> wow, how cool. <laughs> so you snatch it up, you know, and you give it out to someone if they need it. Always be ready, willing, and able to share, and care, and to be there, because that's what Jesus is for you, and that's what Jesus in you wants to be for someone else. All you need to do really, is let it.